Hey there! In this video, I wanted to show you an alternate picking etude that I came up with a while back that uh, I show a lot of my private students, and they have had a lot of fun with this particular etude. It's not super long, but it has a few neat components in it, so let's get started, grab a pick, and let's get going. Okay, so this etude is basically made up of four separate parts that are really not that difficult. None of the parts in here are rocket science by any means. Here is part one, the single string aspect of this, which by the way is a great place to start anyway when you're trying to work on coordinating your picking hand with your fretting hand. So here we're going to play 10, 13, 12, 10. So you have three notes, we're playing the low note the high note, the middle note, and then the low note again. That's the basic uh, outline of the pattern. Then I move it to the ninth fret. And what I'm doing here is I'm setting up an E7 tonality. A minor was the first part. The A and the C are both in an A minor chord. When I do this next part, I'm doing nine, 12, 10, nine. And the notes there are G-sharp, B. And those two notes are part of the E7 chord I just mentioned. Then I play A back to G-sharp. So when you hear that, you hear... You can hear that being implied. And I do that throughout the piece quite a lot. You'll hear chord moves in there even though there's no chords underneath. Obviously it's all single notes. So there's part one. I do that two times in a row. Then I move this into um, other areas and in, in, insinuating other chords. So I'm going to go 10, 13, 12, 10 again. Then I'm going to move to 12. I'll do 12, 15, 13, 12. And this hints at a G chord. The B and the D, the 12 and the 15, both are notes from a G chord, uh, B and D. Then I'm going to move to the 13th fret, which is C, and I'm going to do 13, 17, 15, 13. And again, the two outlining notes, the 13 and 17, E at 17 and 13 is C, That those two notes are both in a C chord. So. I go back to the 12, 15, 13, 12. And what you're really hearing there and that is the single string portion of it. So here it is all together. And I do all of that two times in a row. Okay, so there's part one. Part two is what I call a little connector idea here. I'm about to get to the next main theme in this, and before I get there, I'm going to use this series of patterns to get me to uh, the new theme. So here it is. It's actually a very simple idea. It's two string scale-based ideas, right? So it's basically six notes straight up and then down two. In other words, 10, 12, 13 on the second string B, 10, 12, 13 on the first string E. So there's six notes up. And then I just come down two notes. Okay, so that's that part. Then I'm going to shift on the first string down to the 8th fret, C, and I'm going to play five notes on the string. I'm going to play C, D, E, back to the D, back to the C, and then three notes on the second string. I'll play B at 12, A at the 10th fret, and G at the 8th. So you have an eight note pattern that goes like this. 
And when you put those two parts together, you have something you could loop. You could definitely study this on its own. Right, that certainly has its own value there for sure. Okay, moving on. I move back to the 10th fret, second string, and I'm gonna play five notes here. I'm playing A, B, C, B, A, or 10, 12, 13, 12, 10. Then I'm gonna to move to the third string. I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of a position shift to make this work. To get the notes I want, I'm gonna play G at the 12th, F at the 10, E at the 9th, and that's gonna sound like this. And that actually directly mimics the previous eight notes. We did this, didn't we? We had five notes on one string, three notes on the next. Then this one that we just talked about is the same thing. Five notes, shift, and there's three. Okay, I'm gonna do it one more time. I'm gonna stay on the third string. We're gonna go to the seventh fret and the notes here are going to be D, E, and F on the G string, so ten, sorry, 7, 9, 10. We're going to go up and down those notes for a group of five. Then we're going to do three notes on the fourth string, but I do one thing a little different. Instead of going, which is what you would kind of expect, that's what I did you know, with the other two groupings prior, I don't play the seventh fret A at the end. I do this instead. 10, 9, 10. Or C, B, C. And I do that because the next note of the next part is the seventh fret. So I didn't want to hit that note twice. So this part, part two in total, sounds like this. Okay, that's part two. Part three is the next theme, I call it. Uh, it's basically a repetitive pattern that moves through chord, uh, prog uh, chord progression. So here we have a very simple idea that goes like this. Picture six notes, three notes per string. We're going to do seven, nine, ten on the A string, sorry, on the D string four string, giving us A, B, and C, and then the same fretting on the next string down, giving us D, E, and F on seven, nine, and 10. So picture this, those six notes, very simple. Here's how the pattern goes. Lowest note, the two highest notes back and forth. So I'm doing seven on the fourth. On the third string, I'm gonna play the two highest notes, 10, nine, 10. That gives you this. I'm then going to physically flip everything. So now I'm going to do 7 on the 3rd string, and then 10, 9, 10 on the 4th string. Okay, so you end up with the first half being this, which I would loop. Maybe spend some time just doing that on its own but then do the same thing with the flip version of it. Either way, when you put them together, you end up with the pattern that this whole theme is based on. Okay, so I'm gonna do that once. Then I'm gonna move down to the sixth fret on the fourth string, and then we're gonna apply, we're gonna apply the same pattern to this group of notes. Fourth string, we're going to do six, seven, nine. And then on the third string, five, seven, nine. Now, picture those six notes and then apply the pattern that we talked about a second ago. Lowest note, the six on the fourth string. The two highest notes back and forth, so third string, nine, seven, nine. flip, physically flip it. So now we're playing the lowest note on this string and the two highest notes on this string. 
So that'll be five on the third string. Nine, seven, nine on the fourth string. So that's the physical flip of that particular group of notes. Okay, so now we have this. And then I do them again. So two times in a row. From there, we're going to travel up a little bit. We're going to go through the same series of chords that we actually went through on the single string version. So there is a little bit of method to the madness here. It's not all totally random. Um, so we're going to go back to the original one. We're doing... All right, 7, 10, 9, 10. 7, 10, 9, 10. Then we're going to move up. We're going to move to 9. Now you understand the pattern. Here's the note grouping. 4th string, 9, 10, 12. 3rd string, 9, 10, 12. So again, a symmetrical pattern between the two strings. Apply the pattern. Flip. And you have the next part. That hints at a G chord, or even a G7, because it's got the flat 7 in there, right? So you can... So A minor, G7. Now I'm going to move to the 10th fret, and we're going to do the highest position that we're going to use here. You get the pattern, so here's the notes. We're going to do C, D, E, F, G, A. In other words, fret-wise, we're talking 4th string, 10, 12, 14. 3rd string, 10, 12, 14. Luckily, another symmetrical shape. Apply the pattern. Then go back to the one we did just previous, the G7 version. And then what you have, when you have part three here, is this when you put it all together. Two times. The climb up. And down. That leads us to the final part, which is a nice little climb upward using scale fragments. So let's check that out. Two different scale fragments. I do this one first. Now that's the exact same one we did in part two when we did this. Right, the first eight notes of part two. I'm just doing it down an octave here. But for the rest of this, um, we're going to shift a little higher on the fretboard the pattern is going to be slightly different. So here are the notes you're going to do. You're going to do 9, 10, 12 on the third string, and 10, 12, 13 on the second string. But the actual pattern is different than what we had just done. I'm doing this. I'm going to do the 9, 10, 12 on the third string. I'm going to do 10 on the second, jump to the 13, so we're skipping the B note here for a second. Then I go back to the 10 and do 10, 12, 13. So I skip the B the first time and then I fill it in the second time. And that's actually a pattern I love using in licks all over the place. Uh, you could end up with something like this. Just skipping that one note every now and then actually has a cool kind of effect. But back to that idea in this context, we have third string, 9, 10, 12, second string, 10, 13, then 10, 12, 13. All right, now for the final part, I'm going to keep that same pattern, but we're gonna, here's the notes we're going to apply it to. Second string, 12, so we're moving up again. So we got B. We're going to do 10, sorry, we're going to do 12, 13, 15, giving us B, C, D. Then on the first string, we're going to do 12, 16, which gives us a G sharp, kind of hinting at A harmonic minor, but actually more E Phrygian dominant. We'll get into that kind of stuff later. But basically, I'm picturing this lick, or this part of the lick, happening over an E chord, and an E chord contains 
a G sharp, which is why I've got E and G sharp going on here. So I skipped a note. We did B, C, D, E, G sharp. I skipped F, and now I'm going to fill it in. E, F at the 13th fret, then the G sharp again. So that mimics the previous one we did. But it lands perfectly at the 16th fret, allowing us to play the 17th fret to kind of put an exclamation point on the end of it. So here's part four altogether. together. Put a cheeky ending on it like that and you're done. So that's the entire etude and it really is just meant to be uh, a bit of a warm-up. Um, it sounds cool slow so when you're initially learning it it's not going to sound like you know a typical guitar exercise I think. It actually has some musical value to it um, but basically it's a jumping point for you to exercise all the things, all the main tenets of good picking technique and fretting technique for that matter too. So, you know, watch how relaxed you are. That's a super key component. Um, accuracy, all that kind of stuff. So it's not a magic exercise. It's no better than any other exercise you'll find out there. But I wanted to pass it along because it's actually kind of cool sounding and is just as good as a lot of other exercises for, again, allowing you to work on the things, the components that make up a good uh, guitar technique and in particular alternate picking technique. So check it out. I've got tabs actually in the description here uh, accessible both Guitar Pro and PDF so if you're interested in that by all means hit them up and um, I will catch you in the next video.